Welcome to Teach Me Philosophy, Philosophy Tuition Videos by G. Fay Edwards, Professor of Philosophy at Washington University in St. Louis. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the problem of material constitution. Let me begin with a simple question. How many objects am I holding in my hand? One, right? Well, the problem of material constitution gives us a reason to question this judgment. To explain it to you, let me begin by introducing you to Leibniz's law. Leibniz's law states that if we have a thing x and a thing y, if x equals y, that is, if x and y are identical, then x and y must have all the same properties. That is, there is nothing that is true of x that is not true of y, and nothing that is true of y and not true of x. To illustrate, let's take an example. As many people know, Marilyn Monroe's real name was Norma Jean Baker. That is, the names Marilyn Monroe and Norma Jean Baker refer to the very same person. Thus, by Leibniz's law, if Marilyn Monroe has long eyelashes, then Norma Jean Baker has long eyelashes. And if Marilyn Monroe has luscious red lips, then Norma Jean Baker has luscious red lips, and so on for anything you might care to mention, be it blonde hair, blue eyes, uh, date of birth, height, or shoe size. There is nothing which is true of one which is not true of the other. Indeed, it would be a strange world we're living in were it the case that Norma Jean Baker was still walking around out there somewhere when Marilyn Monroe has been dead for decades. Okay. So let's come back to our Play-Doh friend. Let's call him, for ease, White Rider. Now, when we met him a moment ago, we agreed that White Rider is just one object. That is, there's no difference between White Rider himself and the Play-Doh of which he is made. But watch what happens when I do this. Now it looks as if the Play-Doh of which White Rider was made has survived, whereas White Rider himself has unfortunately met his end. Now, this creates a problem for us in the following way. It turns out that the lump of Play-Doh is squashable, whereas White Rider is not squashable. By Leibniz's law, this is going to force us to distinguish the two. That is, it's going to force us to say that the lump of dough and white rider are not the very same thing. In just the same way that we cannot say that Norma Jean Baker is having a walk around the block while Marilyn Monroe is lying in her grave. It looks like we were wrong then at the start of this video to say that I was holding just one object in my hand. Instead, it looks like we have two objects with different properties. So what are we to say about this? Well, we have a number of options. The first is to accept the possibility of spatially coincident objects, a view known as constitutionism. According to this view, White Rider, contrary to our intuitions, is not one object, but two, occupying exactly the same space at exactly the same time. He is both White Rider himself and the lump of Play-Doh which constitutes him, which makes him up. This view has been defended by philosophers such as David Wiggins and David Lewis. Now there are a number of problems with this view, but let's note just one for the time being. We might want to call it the problem of overpopulation, for according to this view, notice that the chair that you're sitting on is not one, but two objects. Your telephone is not one, but two objects. Your teacup is two objects. Your rubbish bin is two objects. Indeed, you've been miscounting objects your entire life. For reasons such as these, some people think the constitutionist view is absurd. Another option is to claim that only simples exist, a view known as eliminativism. According to this view, White Rider himself does not really exist. In fact, only the simples of which he's composed exist, such as the atoms from which the Play-Doh is made. Philosophers who endorse this view, or something like it, are Peter Unger and Peter van Inwagen. 
The problem with it, of course, is that where we formerly had two objects, we now have none. The chair that you're sitting on does not exist. Your telephone, your teacup, your rubbish bin, none of them really exist. Once again, you have been miscounting for your entire life. There are other options, of course. Some people attempt to deny the existence of the lump once it has been formed into a statue. Other people claim that something has gone wrong with our reasoning and we need to go back and fiddle around with Leibniz's law. But what do you think the answer is?